What's up, TBC? How you guys doing today? Today, I'm gonna tell you guys more about how to break in your Mustang after you installed your cylinder head. So let's go ahead and show you what my mileage is currently, and then go ahead and go over what you need to do ordinary to break in that new cylinder head with those nice performance cams. Right now, ladies and gentlemen, I'm at 95,458 miles. Now the procedure to this is actually pretty damn easy. I'm gonna tell you guys right now. So what you have to do, you have to keep it below 4,000 RPMs. And why? Because you don't want those cams to be spinning really damn crazy when they're barely breaking in. It's really important. You don't wanna bend anything. You don't wanna snap a camshaft. And you definitely don't wanna harm any of your valves after doing all of that work, because then it would just be pointless, right? <laughs> but anyways, so let's go ahead and start traveling on the road. I'm gonna tell you guys what you need to do, how to break it in properly, and what's the mileage that you need to be at after you have successfully broken in that brand new cylinder head. It's not as bad as breaking in a whole entire engine, so don't think that it is. It's actually relatively pretty damn easy, so you don't have to go 1,500 miles before your engine is broken. So let's go ahead and show you. Here we are, sweet old Arizona. If you guys don't know, yeah, that's where we be. That's where we're at. Yeah, let's give some love to Arizona, the hottest state you can be living in. It feels like hell, but we are still here trying to break in this Mustang. So let's go ahead and show you guys what you need to do and how you need to break it in. And it's pretty much just driving the car normally, to be honest, there's really nothing really to it because of the fact that, you know, it's just simple. I wanted to make this video for you guys because of the factor of, I didn't want you guys to mess up on this and it's very important to make sure that you break in the cylinder head to the T. It, it's just very important. You wanna make sure everything gets broken in evenly and everything works. So when you do add more boost or get on it, because we all know these EcoBoosts are fun and I can't tell you guys more about them they are just fun I love driving the EcoBoost it is definitely something different and it, you know I wanted a GT but here we are EcoBoost new cylinder head a whole bunch of mods done to her we're gonna be making GT horsepower here in no time so as you guys can tell I am just driving the car normally I'm staying obviously off of sport mode because sport mode will actually kick the RPM a little too high if you accidentally hit the gas pedal a little harder, where drive mode won't. And what I mean by that is, that was me hitting the gas pedal pretty, pretty hard. So if you, if you accidentally do it, like that, you don't have to really worry too much unless your foot to the floor and wide open throttle, which you should not be doing. Do not go wide open throttle because you will definitely harm those cams. So you wanna stay below 3000 RPM and make sure that your RPM is staying below 3000. So keep your eye on your speed, keep an eye on your RPMs and keep it below 4000. It's as simple as that. For me, I took my car out to California, which is the where I grew up anyways, you guys know this. I mean, come on up, you're an OG subscriber. You guys know I grew up in California and I love California, but to be honest, Arizona is the coolest place to live. I mean, you can't go wrong here. It has so much potential here in Arizona and we are growing majorly. Even when the coronavirus came around, now it's back again and of course, because it's election time. But on that behalf, it's, it's nice to do modifications here. So this is the reason why I kind of thought, you know what, let's do perform performance cams, get some better APR head studs, get that head gasket in after I blew mine. So now it's time to gain more power. Now in order to do that though, is you have to drive the car quite often. So 500 miles and you can 
go ahead and, and beat on it if you want. I mean, that's up to you. If you want to wait till a thousand miles, that's totally cool too. You can wait until you hit a thousand miles. It won't hurt anything if you wait a little bit longer. Actually, it will keep you knowing that it's, it's a little bit better off that way, right? So if you wait a thousand miles, you don't have to really worry about anything breaking or going wrong or hitting something or missing or misfiring or whatever the case may be if you accidentally break a camshaft or bend a valve. So as long as you followed my video to the T and this one to the T, you should have no problems at all. Now let's go ahead and go back to the road, show you a little bit more of that on how to keep it stable and make sure that you're just driving the car normally because you don't want to drive the car harsh right now. I know you want to. I know you do. But we cannot drive the car hard right now. We got to keep it below 4K. And the reason for that is because the faster those things spin, the more chances that you have of bending a valve if it's not broken improperly. And a brand new head, you just gotta keep that in mind. Now, if you don't have a brand new head and you maybe you would have gotten your head resurfaced, then cool, cool beans, whatever. But you still gotta break in the camshafts. So let's go ahead and show you.